Fleeing the confines of camp, a boy sought refuge from the unrelenting harassment he endured all summer, from a spiteful pack of juveniles. Determination fueled his steps as he muttered, I'll show them. His voice grew stronger as he added, I have friends. Guided by the brilliance of the full moon above, he ventured deeper into the encompassing darkness of the woods. An hour's walk, he estimated, brought him to a clearing where the home ahead cast a prominent silhouette against the night. Nestled on the edge of the forest clearing, an abandoned two-story farmhouse stands as a spectral sentinel of forgotten days. Its weathered wooden facade bears the weight of time, with peeling paint and cracked windows recounting tales of bygone occupancy. The moonlight casts haunting shadows across its decaying form, highlighting the intricate details of once elegant architecture now surrendered to nature's relentless embrace. Vines creep up the walls like ghostly fingers, seeking entry to a structure that has long surrendered its vitality. Silent and enigmatic, the farmhouse stands as a portal to history, a silent witness to the passage of time on the fringes of the wild woods. Standing within the second-floor bedroom, he strides toward the window, its frame conspicuously absent, allowing the cool midnight air to envelop him. Glancing outside, he fixates on the moonlit panorama, its gentle radiance suffusing the summer night atmosphere. A quick glance at his cell phone reveals the absence of reception, a realization that isolates him further. He contemplates the full moon momentarily before emitting two purposeful whistles into the darkness, a hopeful call for a response as if expecting someone's arrival. In a sudden shift, his attention is seized by the approach of a darkened figure. Urgently, he waves his hands, then pulls them back abruptly, recognizing his error. With a sinking feeling, he realizes the silhouette does not belong to his friend. Panic takes hold as he retreats from the window, desperately hoping to evade detection. The figure responds with an echoing whistle, met with the boy's silence. As tension escalates, he remains perched at the window's edge, his intrigue piqued by this mysterious nighttime visitor. Despite his efforts to conceal himself, the figure emerges from the shadows, unveiling a young woman in her mid-twenties. Her skin pallid and her hair an ashen white, shrouded entirely in black attire. She halts and surveys the abandoned dwelling with a deliberate gaze, casting her eyes upward, closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. Then, breaking the silence, she calls out, her words carrying an unexpected twist. Hey, boy, it looks like that house is big enough for the both of us. Please be a gentleman and invite me in. The strange request lingers curiously in the air. Uncertain and wary, the boy withdraws from the window's edge, grappling with how to respond, his voice held captive by uncertainty. Unperturbed, the woman proceeds to recite an enigmatic serenade. Beneath the moon's soft silver gleam, I stand, a creature of night's dream. I whisper through the rustling leaves, a tale of longing where darkness weaves. Invite me in, let me in, unlock the secrets that lie within. I promise not to steal your soul but to share a life that makes us whole. A dance of shadows, a tender trance, a life that defies both time and chance. See how the stars bow down to me, a night's enchantress, wild and free. Invite me in, take my hand, and let our destinies entwine and stand. Embrace the night, surrender the fear, release your doubts, draw me near. I offer you a life beyond compare, just invite me in if you dare. The boy fled the bedroom with all the haste he could muster, abruptly halting in the corridor. He cast a tense gaze back at the open bedroom door, a blanket of silence settling around him. His attention shifted towards the foot of the corridor's expansive bay window. To his horror, a slender black silhouette manifested before him, the vampire taking form. A twisted smile crossed the vampire's face, a chilling declaration escaping its lips. Oh, by the way I lied. Someone already invited me in. Now run, as fast as your legs can carry you, boy. 
<laughs> Fueled by terror, the boy raced down the flight of stairs, his steps unsteady, nearly sending him crashing to the ground. His relief palpable as he safely navigated the descent, his attention was abruptly captured by the front door bursting open. In an instant, recognition dawned upon him. It was Chris and Rachel, the senior camp counsellors. Their arrival was a sight to behold, a glimmer of hope amidst the nightmare. We looked for you everywhere. Luckily, I remembered this house was even here. Rachel's voice carried worry, yet in that very moment, chaos erupted as the vampire ruthlessly tore into Chris's flesh, blood spraying in a gruesome display. Shocked, Rachel and the boy stood momentarily stunned before horror gripped them. Fleeing from the abominable scene, they witnessed the vampire feasting, providing them precious moments to escape the clutches of that nightmare. As the boy makes a desperate dash towards the doorway, Rachel's firm grip yanks him back, her urgency palpable as she insists that their path lies in the basement. Outside, we'd be nothing more than easy prey. Trust me, we need to head downstairs. She implores. Acting quickly, he follows her lead, descending the stairs in a frantic flurry. Amid their frantic search through the dimness, they eventually arrive at a colossal iron door. Rachel recounts encountering this very door during her previous visit to the abandoned house. Despite its ancient appearance, the door seems constructed to endure centuries, as though it could withstand hurricanes, tornadoes, as well as any form of monstrous assault. The sight of the eerie, tentacled creature intricately engraved upon the surface exudes an aura of ominous mystery and grandeur. Rachel, with a resolute tone, instructs the boy to step inside first. Pushing him forward as he fell to the ground, she closes the door behind him. The resonating thud of the door's closure reverberates through the space, casting an unsettling silence. Rachel did not enter with him. He calls her name, but she does not respond. The boy is left grappling with a whirlwind of emotions. What could drive Rachel to take such action? Could it truly be a sacrifice made for his safety? A sudden anger <coughs> scream pierces the air, shattering his wings. The boy instinctively covers his ears, tears streaming down his cheeks in response to the heart-wrenching sound. Surveying his surroundings, he took in the sight before him. The stone walls, adorned with bizarre eldritch symbols, exuded an aura of formidable antiquity, setting them apart from the surrounding abandoned timber house structure. Within the circle encompassing the stone altar, candles cast an eerie glow upon the floor, their flames flickering to life. These illuminated sentinels bore witness to the space's recent and frequent utilization, shrouding the area in an air of mystery. A hush fell over the surroundings, an eerie stillness settling in. He turned his attention to the door, finding it devoid of any locks or means to barricade. With anticipation gripping him, he settled into a corner, resigned to whatever fate awaited. His gaze scanned the room, seeking any means of defense. A few scattered stones caught his eye, and then a surge of memory rushed through him recalling the purpose of his journey to this forsaken house. Placing his fingers between his lips, he let loose three resounding whistles, their piercing call echoing in the air, as if beckoning someone or something, a desperate plea in sound. Then a sound reached his ears, laughter, but not just any laughter. It was a loud, almost hysterical eruption of female mirth originating from beyond the door. The door creaked open, revealing Rachel on the threshold. In her grasp, she held a large knife, while draped in a white, flowing ceremonial gown. Mascara trailed down from her eyes, her appearance transformed. Something about her face had changed, erasing the caring and fun-loving counsellor he once knew. He was in shock, unable to look away from her. Following her, the vampire entered with a wide, monstrous grin that shattered any semblance of humanity the boy had encountered. I am to make an offering so I may join their ranks, Rachel proclaimed. Her words struck the boy like a bolt of lightning. Those bullies, their cruel actions, the tales spun about the old house, all orchestrated by me, Rachel explained. A sense of betrayal mingled with fear. Why? He stammered, desperation tainting his voice. Rachel's smile remained unsettlingly calm. You're my ticket to immortality, she declared, her words plunging him into a horrifying realization. Don't do this, pleaded the boy, desperation lacing his words. I have friends, he uttered, his voice strained with a flicker of hope. Yet it was a futile plea. The vampire's compulsion held him firmly in its grip. Unyielding, Rachel guided the boy by the hand toward the stone altar where he was made to lie down. With a commanding tone, he was instructed to shut his eyes, plunging him into a moment that stretched on like an eternity. 
A thunderous boom reverberated, shattering the door into countless fragments. Into the room strode a colossal, muscular werewolf, its presence emanating raw power. As its jaws parted, revealing menacing fangs, a spine ground them. Meanwhile, the vampire pivoted, revealing its elongated claws and razor-sharp teeth. You howl at the moon, but I command the very night you fear. A struggle ensued, a clash of titanic proportions between vampire and werewolf. Claws and fangs clashed, delivering deadly blows in a dance of otherworldly combat. Amid this fierce confrontation, the compulsion that bound the boy's actions shattered, yet he remained still, feigning his paralysis. Slowly he pried open his eyes, transfixed by the incredible spectacle before his gaze shifted downward. Rachel's lifeless form lay in lifeless on the floor, a grim testament to the horrors that had transpired. The boy's heart raced as he tore his eyes from the gruesome scene, finding the strength to break free from his paralysis. He sprinted out of the accursed house, his flight carrying him back towards the safety of camp, leaving behind the nightmarish tableau behind. Filled with a mix of fear and uncertainty, he sprints onward, not daring to look back, and manages to find his way back to safety. The fight between the werewolf and the vampire rages on behind him, their fates uncertain. In the end, he's left with haunting memories of a night that blurred the lines between reality and nightmare.